Welcome back to the international news stage for staff here at CES 2016. I'm Richard Taylor. Now, this place can be pretty chaotic, and let's face it, after a few days, your mind is just a bit frazzled. Your brain is everywhere. Well, Arielle next to me here has a product which she thinks can help with all that. It's called Muse from the company of the same name. Explain what you have in front of you here and how you can help me with my mindfulness. Sure. So this is Muse, the brain sensing headband. It's a device that actually tracks your brain activity in real time and teaches you to meditate. Wow, I could do with that. What we does it actually it. track so, and how does it work? Do us a little demo here. Sure, so there are sensors on the forehead and behind the ears, slips on just like a pair of glasses, tracks your brain activity in real time and sends that data to your smartphone or tablet. From there, it lets you actually hear the sound of your own mind while you meditate. Hearing my own mind, you yes. wouldn't want to do that. It's pretty chaotic, let me, let me tell you. Well, you do, because okay. it'll cue you for when it's chaotic, and it'll give you cues for how you bring it down to a state of quiet. So meditating is amazing for us. There's over a 1,000 published studies. We all know that meditation is good for you, but nobody ever does it. Why? Because it's hard. You sit there, and your brain is bouncing all over the place, and you're like, yeah. I don't know how to do this. Forget yeah. it. Muse makes that process easy by giving you real-time feedback to cut, gu guide you from this crazy brain place that you may be into to a state of clear, focused attention. And how does it actually do that, though? So it's syncing over Bluetooth, it's streaming the data from your brain waves into your phone, and it's doing it graphically, and it's guiding you, is it, through the app? Yep, so it translates the sound of your own mind into sound. So it translates your EEG activity into sound, and what you hear is your mind like the wind. So when you're thinking, distracted, ruminating, bouncing crazy, you hear it as windy. Right. And as you come to a state of clear, focused attention, it quiets the winds. And then it rewards you for being in that place of quiet and guides you into that place of quiet to keep you there. So you're hearing all these sounds, so it's not necessarily just a visual thing. I can close my eyes as I'm kind of meditating and I can do the whole um thing and all of that. And I'm hearing these, these sounds and how do, I, how do I then get guided to a state of, of zen? So what happens is that when you hear something, when you make something that's invisible visible, we then know how to master it. We know how to control it. We know how to work with it. So when you start to hear when, what quiet sounds like and what crazy sounds like, you very quickly learn how to bring it to that quiet and keep it to that quiet. And who are you aiming this at and how much does it cost? The device is 299 bucks, and it's aimed at everyone. We have tens of thousands of users. I constantly get emails from people who were on stress leave because life was too crazy, and they mused and got back to work. How long, how long has it actually been out in various forms? Uh, about 14 months on the market. Right, because I, I remember using one of these things four or five years ago, similar kind of concept, uh, and it just didn't seem to do very much, and I just kind of just left it after a while, and I thought, well, it was just one of these things that's just in the drawer. So what kind of scientific validation do you have to actually prove that this thing does work? So the kind of technology that was around four or five years ago wasn't necessarily that great. Right. What we do now is very complex machine learning, so we're able to sensitively understand when you're in a state of focused attention and when your mind is wandering. It actually builds a model of your own brain each and every time. And it's used by over 120 different research institutions. We have Mayo Clinic that uses it for breast cancer patients. They're undergoing a study demonstrating that it decreases the stress of surgery. Harvard uses it for traumatic brain injury, MIT, and on and on. And presumably, you can take some of this data and cross-fertilize it with other data from other apps. In other words, I'm just wondering whether you can see at what times of day you may be more stressed than others or what kind of situations may be more stressful for you. Is that something that you could incorporate into the product? Yes, yeah, so we have users who use it to, to, to track their sleep and they track their muse sessions relative to when they sleep well and they discover that when you muse, your sleep seems to magically improve. Meditation has that effect. And how long do you use it for? So you can use it for as little as three minutes a day. So you start with just three minutes of meditation, and from there you work your way up. Typically, people use it for 10 minutes a day. So we just did a study uh, that was done by the University of Toronto, and it demonstrated that 10 minutes of musing a day for six weeks decreases your somatic symptoms, your headache, your pain, your nausea, increases your calm, obviously, and surprisingly improves your cognitive function. So in a divided attention task, you're able to make decisions on what to attend to 50 milliseconds faster. So it's making you feel better, it's making you sharper and calmer. And where else do you see the technology advancing? Tell me about the sensors and what kind of waves it's actually reading at the moment. You said there's various sensors obviously picking up things inside uh, which are emanating from your, the, the brain waves, if you like. What other things can you incorporate going forward which, you, which you're looking at? 
So these are conductive ink sensors on the forehead, conductive rubber sensors behind the ears. It's measuring full spectrum EEG from 2 hertz up to 100 hertz. We can also measure uh, with other plugins EMG. There's an accelerometer on here, so you can look at movement and correlate between movement and brain state. Uh, and then we also have this massive developer community that do silly things like thought control drones and also amazing things like uh, creating games for kids with ADHD that they're in the midst of validation of or games for kids with anxiety. So are we looking at mind control then of games and you know, how far are we away from that kind of thing? So mind control at this point, in big quotation marks, uh, thought controlled computing is at a very basic level. You can only do really basic things. The real value from this comes from understanding and improving the self, really opening a window into your own mind and making the invisible space of your brain visible, tangible, actionable, optimizable so that you can live a better life. But I guess only a few parts of it are visible. So presumably, as we move forward, more sensors mean that you'll be able to unlock different parts of the brain and it will become a richer experience in terms of the amount of data that you can mine. Yep, so we're always improving our ability to gather more data and then create better and better algorithms and experiences. And, and what other things can you actually do with this apart from, is there anything else you can do apart from using it as a meditation tool? So we've done lots of fun stuff over the year. We started by creating concerts over a decade ago where people could make music with their minds, the very early precursors of this device. Then we made stuff that you could physically control, like a levitating chair, as you would relax. It would detect the increase in your alpha brain waves, and the chair would rise. That, again, was very, very basic technology, like almost a decade ago, but amazingly cool interaction. And then at the Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics, we had a project where people in Vancouver could control the lights on the CN Tower, Canadian Parliament Buildings, and Niagara Falls with their brain from across the country. Oh, that's fun. It was amazing. 7,000 people got to individually interact with these massive icons directly with their brain. So you're a Canadian company. We are. And how many people do you have working in your team, working on this stuff, developing the next generation? We're a team of 50 and a split between deep technology, so deep learning, machine learning, computer science, neuroscience, as well as experience design. And where can people actually buy the Muse? At Best Buy. At uh, Best Buy, OK. Yeah. Well, that's so in the US, uh, in select Best Buys in Canada, all all across the nation on Amazon and Amazon.co.uk for the, uh, the uh, Brits out there. Excellent. OK, well, I'm, I'm going to try this out now and see if I can get myself a little bit more mindful. There's plenty more still to come from the stuff stage at CES, including the wearable awards and plenty more fun gadgets just like this, but maybe not quite as useful. Other way around. <laughs>